Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. And welcome to Prince of Peace. I'm Father Joy Thomas Neliseri, the associate pastor here. Thank you for your interest in studying Bible. As we go through this coronavirus infection and pandemic, we know none of us have the energy and motivation to do things. Needless to say, study Bible. You know, you are kind. Your generosity is deeply appreciated in joining me in studying Bible online at this time. We are on the fourth session of studying the gospel according to St. Mark. And so I haven't answered many of the questions I received from your emails. It's partly because of two reasons. One is the hope that sooner we will be able to come together to the building and so the answers will be beneficial to everyone. The second is because some of the questions need your presence so I can understand from the total body language of the person whether you are getting what I intend. So that's why I, I haven't answered any so I have no plan to answer any uh, questions this session because I'm holding, I'm keeping all your questions and I have, I know the answers, but I'm holding it, okay? So we will do that sooner, hope so. So as we come together today, the fourth session, uh, I want your special attention. I need your Bible next to you so you could flip the page and see what's going on because Mark is more about the deeds of Jesus and it's very emotional way it's written with the details. So let us pray and begin the class. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful. In the same spirit, help us to relish what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, welcome to the fourth session. So far, we have discussed in the last three classes extensively the sacred Bible, the, the Word of God. Where do we get this idea, Bible is Word of God? So we talked about the word Mikra, a voice of God calling out for relationship and communion. We talked about the Jewish understanding of Tanakh, Torah, Nevim, and Ketuvim, the instructions, prophets, and writings, and how Moses received this Jewish sacred scripture through God's giving him the written and oral Torah and how during the course of many centuries this oral word of God got written form of it. And so we talked about the number of books in Bible. The, the Catholic Bible, the Orthodox Bible has 46 books in the Old Testament and 27 in the New. But we know the Jewish Bible has only 39 books. And we talked about the Septuagint translation and how the time of Jesus that was the sacred scripture they used and how the New Testament developed the death of the last apostle became the end of canon. And commonly everyone generally accepts that 27 books. And we talked about what is gospel, the Evangelion. What does that mean? Why there are only four gospels? There are 12 apostles yet. And there are books in the name of apostles. And how come they are not in the canon? 
Then we came to the Gospel of Mark, his family, who he is, what is his worldview, and the two apostolic churches that he instituted still active and alive, the Coptic Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church. So today we come to the idea why did he write the gospel and what is the gospel of mark what do we learn from this first written gospel so i need your help opening your bibles as we go through this to have a better understanding since we don't see each other and communicate at the real time so the consensus is Mark is the first written gospel. We know in the sacred scripture, it's not his book, the first book. It is the gospel of Matthew. Last year when we studied gospel of Matthew, we detailed why Matthew wrote that his gospel into five different books as it is the five books of the instructions God gave to Moses, the Torah, the Pentateuch. So here in the Gospel of Mark, that's not the idea. He is actually writing for Gentiles. And what is the Gospel of Mark? We know Gospel of Mark is the shortest and it has 661 verses. And it could be divided into 105 sections. Uh, not quite events, but, you know, because the parables come in another way. So 505 sections. In that 105 sections, 93 are seen in the Gospel of Matthew and 81 are seen in the Gospel of Luke. Almost the same way sometimes word by word so it looks like matthew and luke used and depended on the gospel of mark to follow their thread of thoughts and we know out of the gospel of mark out of the 105 sections 665 verses only four sections are not used either in Matthew or Luke. So 101 sections of Mark is copied by Matthew and Luke in some way. And so we know Matthew has 1068 verses. He took 660 verses of Mark. That means out of 661 he just left out only you know very little very little and how about Luke Luke has 1149 verses little more longer than Matthew and he reproduces 320 verses it's almost less than little half of Matthew, but almost the, the material is copied. So of the 55 verses that are not used by Matthew, you know, Matthew used out of 661 verses, 606 verses, so the 55 verses that are not used in Matthew, Luke took 31 of it. And so we know how interconnected these are. So there are only 661 verses in Mark. And out of that, Matthew produced the 606 of them and Luke produced, used, 31 of them and so there are only 24 verses left out from the gospel of mark that is not in matthew or luke 
They are synoptic gospels. They are all parallel. They could be seen at the equally in three columns. And so we know the significance, relevance and importance of the gospel of Mark right from this little understanding. How much this first written book is followed through by Matthew, who was an apostle of Jesus, and Luke who was a disciple of Paul. And so it's it's very clear the the role and the relevance and significance and importance the Gospel of Mark had in the very early part of the development of our faith process. So we come to the understanding that Matthew used 51% of Mark's words, literal words, and Luke used 53% of Mark's words in writing their Gospels. And so Mark's order of event is generally followed in approved by Matthew and Luke, though they differ between them, but not against the Mark's order. So it's almost clear that they sort of kept this as the basic frame to know and to understand to and to experience this Christ experience. So the added material both in Matthew and Luke are around 200 verses are not about what Jesus did, but what Jesus said. Please keep that in mind. Mark's gospel is used by Matthew and Luke to write their gospels, but the added material they use, that which is not in Mark, it's about what Jesus said, the teachings of Jesus, the sayings of Jesus. Why that is important? Because Gospel of Mark is on what Jesus did, the deeds of Jesus. So we know Matthew and Luke used Mark as a common source to follow. So was there any other source there? Where did they get this 200 extra verses? That which was not, you know, in Mark's gospel. There comes a very interesting understanding. We call it common source. That Q stands for Quelle, which is a German word meaning source. This book, Q, it doesn't exist now. It did at one time. We know it should have been very important book of the sayings of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus when it existed. We lost it. But the biblical scholarship agrees there had a common source, a book, but we don't know the name of it or the author of it, but we know there had a common structure source out there and biblical scholarship calls it quelle, the German word for Q. So we don't know more about it, but we know it was respected. It was used in devotionals. So that has to be approved by eyewitnesses as the teachings and deeds of Jesus. And that common source was the source for Matthew and Luke to add whatever they took from Mark and added to their own Gospels. So the, the things when we understand the Gospel of Mark, what we understand, there are things only in Mark, even though that Mark was heavily copied and depended by Matthew and Luke. See, Mark has only nine parables, you know, while Matthew has 20 parables of Jesus. Look at Luke, 28 parables of Jesus. 
why so it is so short in mark because the focus the focus is the deeds of jesus why is that we don't know we understand as we read and study the bible that anybody can say anything but the words has to be proved by action and so mark is focusing the deeds of jesus the deeds are the acid test acid proof that's what mark is doing look at you know lucas 28 parables of jesus teachings of jesus matthew has 20 of them but mark has only nine because the whole emphasis is on the deeds of jesus and even though he the gospel of mark is heavily used in matthew and mark and luke there are still two parables and two miracles only in mark and the we know the growing seed the story of growing seed gospel of mark chapter 4 verses 20 6 to 29 that's not seen either in matthew or luke you know the the parable of the seed growing by itself he i read the sacred scripture he also said this is what the kingdom of god is like it is as if a man should scatter seed on the earth night and day while he sleeps when he is awake the seed sprouts and grows how he does not know of its own accord and the earth produces first the shoot then the ear then the full grain in the ear and when the crop is ripe at once he puts in the sickle because harvest time has come this is not seen in matthew or luke another is a traveling household chapter 13 verses 34 to 37 that talks again another parable that's not used in any other that it details another beautiful story you know, that reads like this It is like a man traveling abroad, leaving his home and putting his servants in charge, each with his own work to do, and he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. It's a short story, but it has two parables only in Mark. There are two miracles only in Mark. Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 to 37. That's a rather lengthy passage comparing to the other two. So I'm not reading it, but you know, it is the healing of the deaf man. Returning from the territory of Tyre, he went away by way of Sidon towards, you know, the Lake of Galilee. Then the Decapolis territory. It's where that Ephatha, be opened happens and that's not used either matthew or luke the another story is chapter 8 the blind man at bethsaida which is verses 22 to 26 you know he took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village and it is a slow process of healing the blind in three steps there is a process and that is only in the gospel of mark so mark even though the shortest has only very few parables of jesus and in comparison to matthew and luke yet there are two parables and two miracles we see only in mark neither in luke nor in matthew and so we owe the 
evangelist Saint Mark the basic understanding we have on the wind of Jesus life the deeds of Jesus life while the Gospel of Matthew which we studied last year we know our knowledge of the substance of Jesus teaching the the fundamentals the sayings of Jesus is heavily structured in Matthew because he puts everything together he was the, remember he was the tax collector he was the CPA so everything is in structure in order and systematic presentation all the teachings of Jesus put together chapter 5 6 7 in Matthew as the Sermon on the Mount in parallel to the teachings instructions of Moses to the people from Mount Sinai so we over mark the deeds of Jesus the events in the life of Jesus so the I want you to uh, take some time to kind of figure out what are the basic frame you know when we build the house the corners are set then we have the studs the so what would be the studs the gospel of mark the first thing it is so visible and audible when we read that book is that the Jesus as he is you know, 2000 years later our understanding of Jesus is the holy incarnated God but Mark is presenting Jesus as he is as he was the presentation is symbol and dramatic it's it's straightforward because it's mark is writing around 66 to 68 and 68 he was killed so it's after peter's death which was 65 so it's 66 67 somewhere there and so the the whole idea to reignite jesus memory in his community it is to help people to the memory of Jesus is to be alive in them and to help them to recall the events and deeds of Jesus and to know that is what we are called to do so see the gospel of Mark chapter 4 verses 38 you know that's the uh, characteristic of Mark's writing it's just I just want to read that just one verse they woke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are lost so they they woke him where was he sleeping in a boat that is being tossed you know and look at the details in simple way then a great squall of wind occurred and the waves were breaking into the boat so that it was already being swamped but he was in the stern sleeping on the cushion what a detail what a symbol dramatic presentation in one sentence you know then a great squall of wind occurred and the waves were breaking into the boat it was already being swamped yet at the stern if it breaks the first part that would sink is the stern yet at the stern Jesus was sleeping on a cushion how much details are there how simple the presentation is you know and so yet it's a dramatic presentation a very vivid painting on what was going on there so Jesus as he is in in his own details we will see that a little more in second characteristics of the gospel of mark another big sectional stud he has used is he never 
sidelined the divinity of Jesus. It's always going together that Jesus, the man as he is, the carpenter, at the same time, the divinity of it makes it very clear. The very first verse of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 1, the beginning of the Gospel about Jesus, the Messiah, Son of God. The beginning, the beginning of the Gospel about Jesus, Messiah, Son of God. You know, the way the introduction clarifies who he is, what's the purpose. And then the second verse, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, directly takes to messianic prophecies and the understanding. You know, and so the impact of Jesus on the minds and hearts of people, how people understood Jesus. Look. Verse 1, I mean, verse chapter 1, verse 27. All the people were so astonished that they started asking one another what it meant, saying, a new teaching with authority. He gives orders even to the unclean spirits, and they obey him, obey him. So the, the astonishment of the people is presented because the divinity is felt by the people. You know, chapter 4, verse 41, again we read that the, the strength of this divine presence, the divinity of Jesus, chapter 4, 41, you know, they were overcome with awe and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him, obey him? The astonishment of the people that they experience Jesus is divine, that God is in him and with him. Look at chapter 6, verse 51. Then he got into the boat with them and the wind dropped. They were utterly and completely dumbfounded. Experience of the divinity of Jesus. Chapter 10, verse 26. Uh, I hope you are able to open your Bible with you, with me. Okay, that's why I take this time to that, allowing you to figure where they are. You know, look at chapter 10, verse 26. They were more astonished, saying to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus gazed at them and said, by human resources, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, everything is possible. And so the divinity of Jesus is never sidelined, it is equally presented throughout. The third major stud in the building of this gospel, Mark uses the humaneness, the, the raw humane nature of Jesus. And it's so Jesus as he is, the divinity of Jesus and the humaneness of Jesus at the same time. You know, look at chapter 6, verse 3. Chapter 6, verse 3, just makes that simple, direct presentation. You know, is not this the carpenter? Is not this the carpenter? Remember, carpentry was not that, that respected profession at that time, even though it was, they depended on everyday life for almost everything on carpenters and builders. But then they are looking at the external and say, he is not from the royal priesthood. He is only a carpenter. He is not the great scholar. He is not this accomplished thing. But what comes from him, the humaneness of Jesus, 
you know you know in the gospel of matthew chapter 13 verses 55 matthew and luke dilutes it matthew makes it the carpenter's son you know just to to make it a little more noble and but the humaneness in the mark just to the way it is another the chapter 1 verse 12 the spirit you know immediately drawing him so the very first day of the event jesus is baptized you know and then he is immediately after the baptism and at once the spirit drove him into the desert spirit drove him you know it's just pushing him directing him driving him into the desert for the test while matthew and luke dilutes it you know because a few more years later when they write they make it as much possible the divine side of jesus a little more highlighted in the gospel of luke chapter one i read filled with the holy spirit jesus left jordan you know and led by the holy spirit into the desert leading somebody and driving somebody see the difference the humaneness of jesus to say and think about the emotions the human emotions of jesus they are big time used in the gospel of mark as the the basic studs in this whole building of that jesus experience look chapter 3 verse 5 chapter 3 verse 5 uses that word the angry jesus you know very humane emotion presented that jesus says then he looked angrily round at them grieved at their hardness of heart and said to them angry grieving at their hardness of the heart chapter 8 verses 33 another big occasion the anger of jesus is visible in a way mark is presenting it Peter began to rebuke him, but turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. The, the anger response of Jesus. The the second chapter 6, verse 6, we see the amazement of Jesus that the people do not believe in him. And so read, he was amazed at their lack of faith. He couldn't do much there because they, they didn't believe. You know, chapter 6, verse 31. He is saying, we need to rest. He told them, Come away yourselves on your own to some lonely place and rest for a while. They didn't have even time to eat. So Jesus takes the initiative to take them to rest. Verse 34, you know, the crowd is so large and he took pity on them because they were like sheep without shepherd. The compassion of Jesus. And then we see the love of him chapter 10 verse 21 that rich young man who came to ask to jesus how do i inherit eternal life and jesus look at this response of jesus verse 21 you know and so the the whole idea of matthew's presentation of the humaneness of jesus jesus looked hard at him looked hard at him 
looked hard at him and loved him and said, loved him. The human emotions, hunger, another big time presentation in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 2. This is happening and the Jerusalem ministry is beginning. The Messiah is entering into Jerusalem. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, close by the Mount of Olives, you know, this is sending them to get the uh, the preparation for the Passover things. He wanted to get this little colt that's not never used. And so the next day they had this big, big uh, solemn entry into Jerusalem, the Hosanna, the Palm Sunday we celebrate. And the end of that is the next day, as they were leaving Bethany, he felt hungry. The hunger. And so the human emotions are highlighted. And then another big, the fourth thing is the eyewitness details, which is throughout the gospel is detailed. The eyewitness details. You know, the what people felt about the presence of Jesus, the deeds of Jesus. And look at how details he makes it. I have given the either Matthew or Luke in parallel to it. So you would read them and you would understand exactly what that people saw the difference. You know, the, the he is not just doing things, but the precision of it, the details of it, how people felt. See the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 36. Okay, This is about the question, who is the greatest? They, they came to Capernaum, and on the way they are quarreling among themselves, who is the greatest? And so, when they arrived home, so he sat down, called the twelve to him, and said, anyone who wants to be the first must be last of all and servant of all. Now listen. He then took a little child whom he sat among them and taking it in his arms, he said to them. Look at all the details. He didn't just call a child. He took a little child, little child, whom he set among them, okay, and then taking it in his arms, he said to them, the details, the eyewitness details. The, this is, you know, not something, a story. It's something that he has seen and he observed how sensitive Jesus was to this. The eyewitness details, the little nuances. We, we see that again in the Gospel chapter 10, verses 13 to 36. Jesus and children. Again, the eyewitness details. Look, hear this. People were bringing little children to him for him to touch them. The disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Amen. I say to you, whoever does not welcome the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Then 
he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. The eyewitness details. You would see the difference when you read the Gospel of Matthew or Luke, the parallel events. You know, look at the feeding of the 5,000, chapter 6. Again, so much little, little details that is not in the other books. You know, chapter 6, verse 40. Okay, just, I'm just trying to narrate, make it a little low. The feeding of the 5,000. And they sat down on the ground in groups of hundreds and fifties. Then they sat down in groups of fifties. And just before that, you know, then he instructed them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. Not on the grass, not on the lawn, green grass. The eyewitness details that provides exactly what was going on. Chapter 10, verses 32, the, the journey to Jerusalem. Remember, the, the Gospels, that whole process starts with the journey to Jerusalem, starts with the healing of a blind man in three steps. That's on 8th chapter. Now, on the 10th chapter, as they continue the journey and teach Jesus, they were on the road going up to Jerusalem. Jesus was ahead of them walking. Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed and those who followed were afraid. The details of the whole vivid, clear, 3D dimension pictures. Simple words, but very much in-depth eyewitnesses in the Gospel of Mark. You could read the parallel in Matthew and Luke and see the difference. Then again, the coming of the sea, where the details, which I said earlier, that he was sleeping on the cushion you know, on the stern, on a cushion. I mean, how much details to that, you know? The, it tells, look, then the great squall of wind occurred and the waves were breaking into the boat so that it was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, sleeping on the cushion, you know. And they woke him and said to him, the details as if it's part of he is part of this experience he is writing what he has seen and heard the, the fifth characteristics of the gospel is the simplicity and realism in the greek language now this i cannot do this online thing you need to be in front of me in a classroom that i could show the difference in the greek actual Greek Bible and in the, the English Bible because if I can, you know, you cannot see it. I don't assume you all have a Greek Bible with you. So it's, it's very hard, but this is very, very important thing. You know, you could see it in your English translation, the style of a child. You know, when children speak, they use so many and, and, and the ands, you know. As we grow up, the teachers told us, no, 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 break them into different sentences. Conjunctions are only for rare use. Not You cannot repeat that so many ands, make it simple sentences. And so chapter 3 in the Gospel of Mark has 34 sentences connected with and. See the style of it? And, and, and. It's a style of a child, in a sense. You know, thoughts, the thoughts are all stringed together. And so it's not written for a classical presentation, but for reigniting the memory and experience of Jesus in a very, very heart-to-heart -heart way. 
when we read it in a translation, 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 we lose that nuances and the flavor of the whole thing. You know, somebody who doesn't know music, they hear, they just hear sound. But the musicians hear all the notes, all the way each note ends and blend and it doesn't, you know, break and all those details. And so the use of straight away immediately, the terms like uh, and straight away immediately, 30 times. This is the shortest gospel, you know. And then use of the historic present. Now, I, and I told you that I cannot teach this very well because you guys are somewhere, I am here, and we, we are online, so I cannot show you this precisely how it is, the differences. Just look at chapter 2, verse 17. Okay. When Jesus heard this, he said to them, okay, the... When Jesus heard this, he said to them. The, the Greek Bible it trans is when Jesus heard it, he says to them. So why is it in English Bible? It's not exactly that way. Because that's a grammatical mistake. Remember? So the, you cannot make a you know get the linguistic approval if you translate like that. The linguist won't allow. But the Greek, you buy a Greek Bible, it is when Jesus heard it, he says to them, those who are strong, you know, so those who are well and need a doctor, it is not those who are well and need a doctor, but the sick. The, the historic present is always used in the present tense in the Gospel of Mark. Another is chapter 11, uh, verses 1 and 2. And that's another beautiful expression. When they come near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, to the Mount of Olives, he sends two of his disciples. When they come near to Jerusalem, he sends two of his disciples and says to them, you know. And so the, the whole idea that he is presenting what he saw and heard the way he felt then. He is not even making the linguistic correction to that experience. This is a guy who was very well versed in Greek Hebrew, Latin, you know, and yet he writes it, the, the Greek he knew very well. It's not something that he didn't know and made the mistake. So we know it's intentional using the historic present to make the point and experience of the reader that we go with that realism of the thing. We are not sharing a past experience. We are sharing what there. We are taken over there. We are transported. The collapse of time and space. When we read the Gospel of Mark. The simplicity and realism of it. And the sixth characteristic. The Mark keeps all the Aramaic words. As the last part of that I want to see. The whole thing is built in these six major studs on it. You know, the Aramaic words of Jesus are kept as they are. It, the chapter 5 verses 41 that the little child is being healed. That's another thing. This uh, We will talk about it later. The sandwich style of Mark. The cure of the woman with a hemorrhage happens within the story of the daughter of jo Jairus raised to life. And Jesus is on the way, in the crowd a woman touches and heals. Then once he arrives home, it 
gives a details of the things and listen to the verse 41 and taking the child by the hand he said to her talita kuvum which means little girl i said to you get up but he kept that aramaic word because it's not exactly translatable more than that it it is an experience you know and so he kept to that original words even when he is writing in greek he kept to the original word the another the we just said it earlier ephata chapter 7 verses 34 while mark is you know giving that details about what is happening with this little girl where that total event is presented the healing of the deaf man you know then looking up to heaven he sighed and said to him Ephata, that is be opened and his ears were opened and at once the impediment of his tongue was loosened and he spoke correctly. He wrote the word Ephata straight there, Aramaic word in between the Greek. Another word, Korban, chapter 7, verse 11 again. What he is trying to tell us again is that, you know, it's an argument with the Pharisees and scribes, and he uses the word korban in between it's a if anyone who says to father or mother whatever help you might have received from me is korban that is dedicated to god and so the the straightforwardness of the thing you know chapter 14 abba father and so all those aramaic words he keeps them in Hebrew because the, the emotional intensity of those words, the emotional strength of those words, Mark wants us to experience as we go through the Gospel of Mark. That way we learn to see what Jesus was feeling, experiencing and doing. The verse 36 in Chapter 14 is this straight, you know, in the Gethsemane as the prayer going on. And the third time, remember that? Abba, Father, for you everything is possible. Take this cup away from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. So how does he get all these intense emotional things the details because he was there he was not an apostle but he was one of the 70 he was an insider it's in his mother's house the last supper the eucharist was instituted he was the one the given sign for the apostles to find out in which house we are going to celebrate the passover he was the one who followed Jesus and at the arrest ran away even when he was naked and he gives us the detail. And Mark is this so highly sought after insider Peter and Paul wanted. So we know how he got all these details of the things. The in oh, Jesus crying on the cross, you know, chapter 15 and that the Aramaic is given, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabachthani, you know, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's a northern Galilean Aramaic. Matthew, in his gospel, corrects it to better Aramaic, saying, Eli, Eli, he removes that O 
from the word to make it better you know the the slang or pronunciation on local thing that mark presents exactly as it was this is the characteristic of this gospel that's what so thank you dear friends we conclude here we talked about the characteristics of mark's gospel and that specific you know nature of mark's basic understanding and presenting the jesus so we talked few things today in depth that help you to look and explore the gospel of mark in a little more in depth and read it as an emotional story of jesus that mark presents and so next week i hope you join me we will study a little more the perspectives that how mark see through the eyes of jesus remember jesus was died in 33 ad and 65 ad saint peter was killed and then the next year was probably that two years mark writes so it's almost 33 years later that jesus and mark in this world the same age and so 33 years later of jesus resurrection mark is writing this the first written gospel and so the way he is seeing through the eyes of jesus we we will see in little more in depth next week until then thank you so much may god bless you protect you and watch over you thank you god bless